Hey team, we're going to talk about template literals in this jelly drop. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. Template literals, or also called template strings, are a type of string that have some additional features like allowing to embed expressions inside with interpolation, as well as creating a tag, which acts as a function for that string. We can see what that normally looks like by creating a new constant, and let's call that string, where we're going to set that equal to double quotes, hello, comma, world. And we can see that that works by console logging out that string, and we can run our node script, and we can see that it logs hello world. Now, if I wanted to make this string dynamic, I might have to do something like setting up a new constant, where let's call that thing, and let's set that equal to world, where now with my string, I can remove the word world, and I can concatenate thing right to the end of that, where now if I run my script again, we can see that it still says hello world. Now, if we wanted to instead do this with template literals, first, let's comment out this string, and let's create a new string, and we can set that by using the back ticks, and we can say hello, comma, world. But this time, instead of trying to concatenate thing, we can instead replace world with interpolation, where we can use thing right inside of that template literal. And again, if we run our script, we can see that it still works. Now, the cool thing about this is not only does it resolve our constant thing, we can also use an expression in here so we can make this even more dynamic. For instance, in a common use case, our thing might be dynamic from something like an API or a database. So we want to make sure we handle the cases where thing is both defined and where it's not defined. So what we can do is we can use the or operator and we can say if thing is undefined, we're going to say universe. Now, if we try to run this again, we can see that it still says hello world. But if we come up here and we change thing to equal undefined, we can run our node script and we can see that it says hello universe. For another practical example, say we have a shopping cart where we have a constant with a product price and we're setting that equals to $5 and say that that person wants to buy a total of five of those items, we can create a new string where we can say that person's subtotal is going to be that product price times that product quantity. Now, similar to before, if we run that script, we can see that we have a subtotal of 25. And now, as soon as they add another item to their cart, we can see that when we run that script, it's now 30. Another way that this kind of thing is helpful is if you have to manually define your HTML as a string. For instance, say I want to create a new constant and I'm going to call that HTML. Now, inside of that, template literals also supports multi-line string. So if I add those returns in there and add some indentation, it's going to capture all that space from between the starting backtick and the end backtick. But inside, I want to define a paragraph tag that I'm going to use for my application. And inside that paragraph tag, I want to add that subtotal similar to what I did with my console log. So I'm going to add subtotal as a string, then I'm going to add that interpolated value right inside of it. So now let's comment out that original console log and instead let's console log out our HTML. And we can see that now when we run that script again, we have our dynamic HTML string. And if we look closely, we can see that not only does it capture that indentation inside of the string, it also captures the space before and after produced by the returns that we have inside of that template literal. Now, finally, if you've used tools like GraphQL before, you might have noticed that in front of your GraphQL query, you're actually using template literals, but it includes a tag in front of that template literal. What's actually happening here is GQL is a function where you're passing in that string with dynamic data into that function. Say for example, we go back to our example where we have our subtotal constant, where we just have a string that includes our value. If we console log that out, we can see that we have a subtotal and we have our number, but we don't have any currency on that. Currency is tricky because we might not be using the same currency depending on where we are located in the world. So we can make this dynamic so that we can make sure whatever currency we're using, we're showing by the correct symbol. So I'm going to create a new function and I'm going to call it currency, where inside of our function, I'm going to add the first argument as strings, where that's going to be an array of strings for what we pass into that function. To test this out, I'm going to wrap my subtotal string with our currency tag. Inside of our currency function, I'm going to console log out that strings array. Now, if we run that script, we can see that we have an array where our first one is subtotal with that space, which represents the front before our expression, as well as an empty string, which is represented by the space after our expression, which currently there is no space. This array is going to be broken up every time you have a string and an expression. 
So to test this out, let's add a little text after this. So we can say do at checkout. And now let's run our script again. And we can see that we have subtotal and then we have do at checkout, which is represented by the text after the expression. We can even see that if we change checkout to a constant, let's call it location, and let's define it in a location constant called checkout. We can see that now when we run that script, we have subtotal, we have do at, and then another empty string, which again is represented by the front, the middle, and the end. Now, in addition to our first argument, we also have a bunch of different arguments that are represented by the expressions that we're passing in. So for every single expression that we pass in, we're adding a new argument. So for example, if we have argument one and argument two, one is going to be equal to the product price times product quantity, and two is going to be equal to location. So back to our actual example, let's remove the ending from our string and let's get rid of this constant location as it doesn't really do much for our example. Let's also update one to the word value. That way we can represent what we're actually trying to do here. But now let's also console log out that value. And now when we run our script, we can see that we get our subtotal array like we did before, but we also get that value, which is represented by that expression. So at the top of the page, let's create a new constant and let's call that currency type. And since I'm in the United States, let's call that USD. Inside of our currency function, we're gonna say if currency type is equal to USD, which it is, return our string strings, the first part of it, followed by the symbol for dollar, and then our value. And since we can see that inside of the first part of our string, we're actually already including that space, we don't need to include it again inside of our return statement. But now let's get rid of those console logs inside of the function and uncomment our subtotal. And when we run our function again, we can see that we get subtotal with our dollar amount, but we also get that currency symbol in the front. We can even take this a step further and say we always want it to show two decimal places. On our value, we can add two fixed with the number two. And again, if we run, we can see that we now have those two decimal places. Well, this makes sense only for USD. We can really expand that to any type of currency that we want to support. Otherwise, if we don't know the currency type, we can return something like unknown currency. That way, we're not trying to display something we don't know. So if we remove USD and set that to undefined, we can run our script again, and we can see that it now says unknown currency. The cool thing is we're using these tags to create dynamic aspects of our strings. Template literals are a powerful way to add dynamic aspects to your code, but also clean things up and make it more readable. Let me know in the comments what you think of template literals. What's been your favorite use case for the functionality? And what do you want to see for my next jelly drop? I'll be using these videos to go over fundamentals of JavaScript and other web tools. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.